What's up everyone, Justin here back with a Wrestlemania Backlash review 2022 Wrestlemania Backlash Remember, if you uh, grew up in the early 90's, uh, Wrestlemania theme song Oh, oh, it's Wrestlemania Well, they should have done that to open the pay-per-view except should have been like, oh, oh, it's WrestleMania Backlash. That would have been fun. Anyways, I always remember that WrestleMania theme. It's all burnt in my brain from the early 90s. So, uh, here we go with my review for WrestleMania Backlash. I will say it killed, killed last year's WrestleMania Backlash. And the other one, the other year too, was uh, in the Thunder, empty arena, empty PC, then they were in the Thunderdome. Pay-per-views are awful without wrestling fans. They're god-awful without fans. My god, the fans bring so much. The fans are the fucking heartbeat and the life blood of wrestling. Could wrestling survive like in a Thunderdome era forever? I don't think so. Could they keep getting money from networks in front of no fans? I don't think so. Seriously, wrestling would probably die if fans could never attend again. So I'm just, I'm so happy the crowd was hot and really. A really good crowd. I believe in uh, Rhode Island. Yeah, Providence, uh, Rhode Island. Usually, East Coast and Rhode Island, New York area. Usually, like 90% of the time for a pay-per-view, 95% of the time the crowd's hot. Watch some of the takeovers, like TakeOver Brooklyn's. The crowds are really hot. And the... Uh, Summer Slams in Brooklyn. Even going way back to the late 80s and 90s. W, WF Pay-Per-View Summer Slam 91. The crowd was hot. At uh, Madison Square Garden. And just all the Madison Square Garden pay-per-views. The crowd, crowds were hot for. Just a really good fan base. I gotta say. In Providence, uh, Rhode Island. So here we go up first. It started off fucking hot with a great, amazing, fantastic matchup. It was a WrestleMania rematch. It was Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins, part two. Sometimes the sequels are better than the original, but hardly ever. I'm talking about movies. Hardly ever the sequels are better. I can't think of any sequels that were better. Definitely not Ghostbusters 2. That was not better. It was not bad, but it was not better. Teen, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie part 2 was not better, but it was good. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know, Kevin Nash was a, in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. I think it was called this Secret of... or something... The Secret of the Ooze or something like that. But Kevin Nash was a super shredder in that. I think uh, that might have been his uh, first movie. I'm trying to think of other part twos. Aliens part two. I don't think I ever saw. I never saw Aliens 2. Terminator 2. That was damn good. I will say Terminator 2 T2 was better than the original in my opinion. With a. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, as the Terminator in Part 2 and the T-1000. Uh, what's the guy's name? Robert Patrick that played T-1000. He was damn good in it. I mean, he didn't have to act, really, but he was good. And uh, Sarah Connor, she was damn good in Terminator 2. What the hell's her real name? I forget her real name, but... She was great. I can't think of other sequels that were better than the originals. But hardly any of them are. But Cody, Seth, Rollins, 
fucking delivered. I'm going to say it. It was better than the WrestleMania match and the re-debut of Cody Rhodes, the debut of the American Nightmare in WWE. Backlash matchup was better than their WrestleMania matchup, in my opinion. Cody, Seth tore it up. They tore the house down. The crowd was on fire, really into this. Before Cody came out, the crowd was chanting, Cody, he's super over. He's, he's selling a lot of goddamn t-shirts and merchandise also, I heard. So uh, Cody Rhodes defeats Seth Rollins in 20 minutes, 45 seconds. If you don't have Peacock, if you did not bother to watch the pay-per-view, if you don't like WWE, well, you should watch this matchup. It was great. So up next we had Omos. This match I didn't care about. I mean, I like both guys, but I already saw it at WrestleMania. But it made sense to move forward with storylines. A lot of the rematches did make sense for the storylines uh, going forward. Omos with MVP uh, defeated Bobby Lashley by pinfall. I expected that. Omos wins. He should get a win. He, you gotta push the guy. I mean, he's so goddamn big. He's a fucking legit giant. I like to call him Omos the Giant on Twitter. He's not never gonna be Andre the Giant. Never. Nobody will. Andre was an attraction. And before, like, 87... Before 86, 87, Andre was actually a damn good worker and he could move and do a drop kick still. But uh, Omos will get better, I believe, being mentored by MVP and other guys helping him. Maybe he's still going to the PC, getting training, I don't know. I know it says uh, Omos was trained by the PC and Kevin Nash helped him, so he should get better. The problem is he's too tall. He's like 7'3". Kevin Nash was maybe 6'10 or 11, but Kevin Nash could move a lot better than Omos. And Kevin Nash had a whole bunch of knee surgeries before he's in wrestling. But uh, Omas, I hope, I uh, have faith he will get better. If he does not, in like three to two years, he'll probably be released. And uh, the only reason they kept the great Kali so long, because the guy was super over and huge in India. And got a lot of fans from India to watch. That's why he's kept around so long. Great Kali was awful. Gr nice guy, great guy. But he was awful as a wrestler. Was he an attraction? Yes, but he was a not good attraction. Because it was sad trying to watch K Great Kali. It was just sad and embarrassing because the guy could not have good matches. The one good match he had was like against The Undertaker. Like one or two of them. And The Undertaker, I'm sure, carried him. Up uh, next, as I said, Omos wins. At one point, Lashley picked up where he picks you up like this, slams you. He picked up Omos and fucking almost slammed him through, through the ring to the concrete floor. That was insane strength. So uh, Bobby's a beast. He can take a loss. At least he won at WrestleMania. My only... Uh, thing I didn't like about Wrestlemania Backlash I did not I'll say what I didn't like at the end about the matches but I wish Liv would have been on the show or the kickoff I wish Asuka would have been on the show I wish Becky would have been on the show or Bianca that would have been awesome but they were not you can't have everybody you can't have your whole roster on every pay per view that's impossible they only had six matches. Understand why they didn't want to have like eight or nine matches, but you could have 
got the women's tag titles on the show or something. We could have Bianca do an open challenge, maybe. But uh, up next was Edge, AJ Styles. Again, this was a better sequel than the WrestleMania match, in my opinion. It was good. 16 minutes, 25 seconds. And what was really good about it was the finish and what happened after the matchup. Where we had somebody, somebody a certain somebody, join Edge's uh, faction Judgment Day. And my God, she looks like a fucking star. And she has a great look. A different look. If you know who I'm talking about, she has a different, unique look. She looks like gothic and punk. That's the only way I can describe it if you don't know who I'm talking about. AJ Edge had a good match. Really good. I liked it better than the WrestleMania matchup. But uh, Damian Priest was banned from ringside at one point. He comes out, tried to interfere down the aisle. But then some person in a hood... Had a hood over their face. I think they had a mask on. I'm not sure. But I could tell from her body type it was a woman. I could tell she had like leather pants on. And like black wrestling boots I believe. Anyways I could tell right away I was like I know who that is. And I heard the rumors that she was going to join. Thank God. Thank God the rumors were true and WWE creative woke up and pulled the trigger and put her in Judgment Day. That's awesome. The Edge's group has now a woman and three members. Will we get more members? I don't know. I, I, I kind of doubt it, but who knows. If they really want to make uh, Judgment Day faction really strong... They could add one or two more people, I guess. You could have, if they add another guy to Judgment Day at one point in the future, on a pay-per-view, you could have Judgment Day against the Bloodline. That would be good shit. Maybe they'll do it at Survivor Series. I don't know. But I'd book that. Judgment Day against uh, the Bloodline. I'd be for Rhea. Teaming with Edge and Priest and Rhea against the Bloodline. I would love it. See Rhea kick uh, Uso's ass and Roman's ass. Uh, she's definitely big enough, strong enough. She could go up against any guy. And probably kick their ass. So anyways, uh, the woman mask hooded figure interferes. Grabs AJ by the arm, pulls him. Down on the top rope. And then Edge gets the win. And she bows. Down on her knees. Goes down on one knee in front of Edge. Who is it? Who is it? Well, they reveal themselves. I almost thought the uh, hooded woman. You could have. If you didn't know it, who it was. You could have thought maybe it was a guy. But I knew it who it was. But anyways. Kneels down in front of Edge. I thought maybe they won't reveal who it is until Raw. But they did. And it was the right decision. Creative. You finally. Uh, creative team Vince. Whoever decided to do it. You finally woke up. And finally are going to book this woman the right way. She should be a heel. A badass heel. And I love her in the dark Judgment Day group. I love it. This is how she should be booked. This is the right fucking way you book Rhea Ripley. She takes the hood off. It's Rhea Ripley. She smiles at the camera. Like an evil smile. It was so great. The crowd popped. They loved it. Some booed. But a lot of them liked it. I loved it. It kind of would have been awesome if uh, Liv would have ran out there and attacked her. I got to represent, I love Liv, I love Rhea, I love Bianca, I love a lot of women in the company, Becky, Asuka, Bailey, I love a lot of women.
But it would have been cool to see Rhea, like uh, Liv jump on Rhea and attack her at Backlash. But maybe that will happen tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe the feud's over between Liv and Rhea. But that would be stupid because then what the hell would Liv have to do? They probably would not put her on the show if they don't have her feud with uh, Rhea more. Maybe Rhea will challenge Bianca. I don't know, but the next pay-per-view is Hell in a Cell. Bianca, Rhea, locked in Hell in a Cell. That's a huge matchup. I think maybe they should save it for SummerSlam. But uh, Edge defeats AJ with help from Rhea Ripley. She is now in Judgment Day. I fucking love that. Great creative decision. Should have happened a long time ago. But there was no Judgment Day around a long time ago. Up next, I quit match. This was a surprising to me. This was damn good. I enjoyed it. I thought, um, I was just looking at something up on a shelf. Anyways, I got distracted. This was better than I expected for the SmackDown Women's title. I quit. Charlotte Flair defending against Ronda Rousey. I'm not a fan of Ronda being back. I think her energy, the looks on her face, seems like she has no uh, enthusiasm. Seems like she doesn't want to be back. Seems like she's just there for the money and... That's okay if you're just there for the money. Whatever. Who cares? But Rhonda has my respect inside the ring. Definitely has my respect outside the ring. Her views are wrong. But uh, inside the ring, she has my respect. She does love wrestling. And she did a hell of a job tonight. Ronda Rousey. Charlotte Flair. You killed it. You did great. Had a great match. They also had a good match at a Survivor Series like two years ago, three years ago or something. That was good. But this was really good. This was I quit. They would not quit. Neither woman would quit. Ronda locked on an arm bar upside down on, on the top rope. Charlotte won quit. They went into the crowd and brawled. That was awesome. They were fighting with... Uh, Kendo sticks on the stage. Uh, Rhonda broke a kendo stick uh, like, from hitting Charlotte so much. They used a the chair a lot. Crowd wanted tables. I did not want to see tables. The, too many tables are fucking broken as it is in wrestling already. And uh, the finish was good. Charlotte had the figure eight. Rhonda won quit. Charlotte. Got her head stuck in a chair, her arm put through it. And uh, before that, Charlotte said to Rhonda, like, happy Mother's Day or something about Mother's Day because Rhonda is a new mother that really pissed off, made her snap, grabbed Charlotte's arm through the chair, her arm bar through the chair. Ronda, Charlotte had to quit. And then later, Kayla Braxton had to report Rhonda's injured with a broken arm or something. And... That's kayfabe. I doubt she broke her arm. But they can report whatever they want. But that is pretty funny. They had to report Charlotte's injured. Maybe she wants time off. I don't know. She might go away for like four to six months. Who knows? That'd be, that would be a good thing for Charlotte to go away. I love Charlotte. I'm a fan of her. But she's been on TV a long time. Fans are sick of her. Tired of seeing her. I'm not, but fans are. If she does not go away and take time off, I would not put her back in the damn title picture at all. I would have Charlotte feud with uh, Lacey Evans, I guess. But don't. She doesn't need a title. Not even the women's tag titles. No. But if I was Vince, I would say to Charlotte, uh, take some time off, 
come back in like six weeks or four months or something. But uh, Ronda Rousey wins. Charlotte had to say I quit. She was getting her arm about to, her arm was about to snap through the chair. That was a good finish and a really good I quit match. This match uh, was the worst match of the pay-per-view. Two thumbs down, I didn't like it. It was boring. It should have been on, it was on SmackDown, I believe, last week. Or two, three weeks ago. I don't know, but this is a SmackDown TV match. Not worthy of being on a pay-per-view. And I know it's a premium live event. I'm going to still call it a pay-per-view forever. Till the end of time. Or till I'm six feet under and I can't speak anymore. I will call it a pay-per-view. But, I don't know. They <laughs> Instead of a premium live event, they could just say, watch our special event on Peacock. Or that would be better than premium live event. Mad Cat Moss, Happy Corbin, I didn't care. I left. I stopped watching. I went to the bathroom, went to get a drink. And uh, I came back, it's still going on. I will say Pat McAfee was entertaining during the commentary. He kept uh, ripping Corbin and roasting him, calling him bum ass. That was funny shit. Pat McAfee, by the way, was fucking great tonight. The guy's legit funny, naturally funny. Reminded me of Bobby Heenan, some of the stuff he was saying tonight. There's a kid in like a fiend mask. At one point he says, a fiend is here tonight. And then another point in the main event he says, I lost my pencil. That was like funny shit that Bobby Heenan would have said. Anyways, Mad Cat Moss wins, defeats Corbin in nine minutes. I didn't give a fuck. End the feud. And take Corbin off TV. I'm sick of seeing the guy. Nothing against him personally or Madcap Moss, but they should go off TV and get new gimmicks or just come back as them themselves. Have them come back as Reddick Moss or Riddick Moss. I don't know. And call, call Corbin by his real name. I don't know if Baron Corbin is his real name. I doubt it, but who, maybe it is. I don't know. Just have them come back as like themselves. Realistic characters. or real, Just realism. Not dumb bad gimmicks. Mad Cat Moss. I don't know what his gimmick is. But he always loves telling jokes. And Cor Happy Corbin. Those are two gimmicks that you would have saw in the early 90's. In the early 90's had some dumb ass, lame ass gimmicks. I mean, as a kid, I didn't care. In the early 90's, I didn't care that the gimmicks were cartoonish and lame. But looking back, they were. Some of them. I actually like Big Boss Man, but he really wasn't a gimmick. Because the guy was a correctional officer in a prison. So now the main event, again, Mad Cat Moss, Happy Corbin should have not been on the show. You could have gave that match to the women, to Sasha, Naomi, Asuka, or could have a six-woman tag or something, or an eight-woman tag. I would have rather saw a 24-7 title match than Mad Cap and uh, Corbin. Main event time, the bloodline. With Paul Heyman takes on R K Mick Bro Drew McIntyre R K Bro, twenty two minutes twenty seconds. This was fucking fire. This was great, awesome main event. Really good six man. The crowd was hype. The crowd was fucking on fire, and it was fucking awesome to watch. Every time there's a hype crowd, I get into the match more and I enjoy it more. Really good six man. The bloodline wins. Before it, they announced. Um, 
that Roman is in the top four of world title reigns of all time. Top four world title reigns in WWF, WWF, WWE. You got Bruno San Martino, Pedro Morales, Bob Backlund, Hulk Hogan, and now Roman Reigns. That's four guys. So Roman's in the top five. All-time title reigns. I don't know how long Pedro Morales held it. I'm not sure. I think it was a couple of years. I don't know if Pedro Morales held it to longer than Hogan. Because Hogan had it for four years. But, uh... Yeah. Roman's not going to catch uh, Bruno. He's not going to catch Bruno's record or... Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund, I think, was champ like five to seven years or something insane. And uh, Bruno is champ seven years. It was a different era, different time. There would never again, for a major company, there would never be a seven-year title reign for a world champ again. That was uh, Bruno won it in the 60s and was still champ in the 70s. So, uh, anyways, Bob Backlund, I want to say, I don't know how long he held it, but I doubt Roman catches Bob Backlund, or I doubt Roman catches uh, Pedro Morales. And I doubt... Roman catches Hogan. For Roman to catch Hogan's record, he would have to be the champ to like 2025, 20, I think. Or 2024 or something. But uh, Bob Backlund, I know he held the title a long time. Great, legit Bob Backlund was a legit fucking shooter and wrestler. He was a legit, great, really good world champ. He had great matches with everybody. So let's check out Bob Backlund. He had the title. He had the title from... Uh, his a sec... The first reign was the second longest in the history of uh, the WWE. F, WWWF. So uh, let's see here. Bob Backlund won the title off of uh, Superstar Billy Graham, I know. I'm trying to find when he won the title, but. Well, Bob Backlund, so uh, I can't find his title ring. Off, uh, let me try, I can't find it. I'll be back in one second. So, uh, Bob Backlund had the title. He won it in February, February 20th, 78. And he lost it December 83. The guy had the title almost five years. Bob Backlund was champion for almost five years. 78 to 83. He was a uh, champ well over four years. Will Roman get to a four-year title reign? I doubt it. Well, Pedro Morales, I'm not sure how long he was champ. But it was probably was for a long time. By the way, I believe Pedro Morales is the uh, first ever Grand Slam uh, winner. The first guy that won all the titles in the WWWF. So uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed my...
WrestleMania Backlash 2022 review. Again, the Bloodline wins. It was a hell of a six-man tag. The crowd was hot. It was a great pay-per-view. Better than I expected. The only match that fucking sucked. Had no business on the show. Was uh, Moss and Corbin. All the other matches were good. I enjoyed. Cody, Seth was really good. The six-man tag, really good. Charlotte Ronda, really good. Uh, what else was there? <laughs> uh, Edge, AJ was good. And Rhea Ripley joining Judgment Day was fucking awesome. I'm so happy for her. Excited about what the future holds for Rhea Ripley as a heel. Because finally, Creative has got it right with her. And put her in a faction. With Edge and Priest. That's a great fucking idea in my opinion. So I like, comment, share, subscribe. Final grade. For uh, Backlash. WrestleMania Backlash. 2022 my grade. I'll give it a B plus. Very good show. Some of the matches were better than the. Uh, first time they met at WrestleMania 38. Was it better than WrestleMania 38? No. But for uh, pay-per-view, that was not Rumble or WrestleMania or SummerSlam or Survivor Series. B-plus pay-per-view. Very, very good and entertaining. Good matches. Crowd was hype. Bye for now.